Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of St. Paul's and Nativity Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania. We are grateful that you are joining us on this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. Please know that we will have worship online during Holy Week, and we also have it in person. We will have a joint worship service on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. at St. Paul's, Good Friday, Tenembrae at 7 p.m. at Nativity, and a modified Easter vigil at 5 p.m. on at St. Paul's. Easter worship is at 9 a.m. at Nativity and 1045 at St. Paul's. We continue to keep Bill Woolworth's family in our prayers. His funeral was on Wednesday. Also, Clarence C. of Nativity was in the hospital but is now home. Please keep him and Lillian in your prayers. Rusty B. of St. Paul's is still in the hospital with shortness of breath and they are doing a number of tests. And if I may, I also would ask if you would keep me in your prayers so that I will have a voice that I can get through Holy Week. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us worship Jesus and let us add our hosannas to those of the crowd. <laughs> Always remembering our baptism, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved and cared for our neighbors as ourselves. Perhaps we have not fully trusted you in this time of worldwide health concern. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. 
as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come together on this Palm Sunday, we are recording it a little bit later. And so we have some of the palms from last year that we will use and bless. But we invite you to use the palm cross that was in your Lent, Holy Week, and Easter bags. Or the weekend of Palm Sunday, we will be getting the ecologically friendly palms that will be distributed in worship, in-person worship, but also if you are one of our online viewers, you can get some palms. Just call the church offices and we can make sure that you get some. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread branches and garments along his way. Bless these branches and those who hold them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And if you would, hold up your palm and know that your palms are blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear. I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment, the moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot for I hear the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around me. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven on earth and under the earth. And every talk, tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he came near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone, if anyone asks, asks you, why, why are you untying it, just, just say this, the Lord, the Lord needs it. So those, so those who were sent departed, departed and found it as he had told them. As they were, as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. And they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he, As he rode along, along people, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he, As he was now, now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole, the whole multitude, multitude of the disciples began to praise God, to praise God joyfully with a loud, with a loud voice for all, all the deeds of power the that they had seen, saying, saying Blessed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Of the Lord. Peace, Peace in, in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees and the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace, dear ones, beloved in Christ, from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who travels with us through this wilderness, and from the Holy Spirit, lively and with us daily. Amen. In this wilderness of Lent, let us begin with one deep breath for God the Father. One deep breath for God the Son. and one deep breath for God the Holy Spirit. It has been two years in the wilderness of COVID. We marked this grim anniversary in mid-March 2022, and millions worldwide have been affected some ill, some recovering, some with long-term effects, some who have died. Every spot on the world has been touched by COVID. As we marked this devastating milestone, I sat back to remember and to reflect. One of the scenes that I was thinking about was the cheering of healthcare workers as they began and ended their shifts. We saw people cheering and clapping, ringing bells and posting signs that said, heroes work here, or thank you healthcare workers. As the numbers and the deaths increased, we were struck, devastated by the numbers and the body bags that grew. As we continue to thank and support those healthcare workers for the amazing job they were doing, and our hearts went out to them as they tried so very hard to hold the hands of those who are dying because family members were not allowed to be in the hospital with their loved ones. And then we also prayed for and cheered the healthcare workers as they tried to protect their own families from this deadly pandemic. Some of them stayed away from their loved ones. Other ha others had vigorous routines to follow to decontaminate when they got home and we cheered. But we have a short attention span, don't we? We were tired. 
We wanted the pandemic to end, but wanting or wishing it to end does not stop this virus as much as we wished or prayed. What can help is to be vaccinated, to continue to wear masks, to socially distance, especially when we are indoors. You know, not only did we stop cheering those blessed healthcare workers, but patients and families in frustration turned on them with angry words and sometimes angry actions. And our heroes wept or left their professions. This change in attitude is something that Jesus faced as well. Throughout this season of Lent, we have heard the stories of Jesus journey, journeying through this Lenten wilderness to Jerusalem and the cross. Extraordinary stories with twists and turns and building suspense. We know the rest of the story, but we were blessed to be able to travel with Jesus. And I thank all of you for doing that throughout these 40 days. Today, we reach Palm Sunday, and we hear the cheers. We cheer as well. And just like we heard the cheers for healthcare workers at the beginning of the pandemic, we hear the cheers for Jesus as he enters the city of Jerusalem. In Luke's gospel, we hear that the multitude began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. And we hear them shout, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Shouting and cheering and triumphant. But they too have a short attention span. Maybe it was not as long as our attention span with the pandemic. In fact, for them, it just took five days before their shouts of, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, turns to crucify him, crucify him. Perhaps it was because the people had a short attention span and what they wanted was for Jesus to be the Messiah of the Hebrew scriptures, who would come and save them and triumphantly put the chosen people of God on top and get rid of the Roman occupiers, the oppressors who were there, the ones who stopped them from living the fullness and the blessed daily life. Of course, we also know that it was the same Pharisees who came to Jesus that day and said to him, you know, make your disciples stop doing this. They and other religious authorities stirred up the people because they were concerned that all of their faith, their religion, the people of Israel who were there occupied by Roman authorities might not have an opportunity to worship and to live because of Jesus. And so they stirred the people up. They, they brought people in who, when they gathered on what we now call Good Friday, they would shout, crucify him, instead of blessed is the Lord. In just five short days, it happened. But the thing is that Jesus told the Pharisees and Jesus told us that the thing is that even if the people would be silent, the stones would shout out because God is God and God sent Jesus to come to this earth. We praise our Lord this day and we too, as the crowds there in Jerusalem on Good Friday, are the ones who shout to crucify him, crucify him. We too have a short attention span when it comes to our Lord. 
Maybe you have gone through this Lent and said, oh, I just can't wait till Easter gets here. Let me jump from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday. And then when we do that, we miss all of this in between. From March 2020 to March 2022 and beyond, we are like, oh, let's just jump past there to here. And we can't. I am reminded of the 23rd Psalm and how wonderful and precious it is. Because Jesus tells us, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for thou art with me. Jesus is walking with us through this Lenten wilderness. Jesus is walking with us through this pandemic as we move, hopefully, through this wilderness and out of it. Just as we move through the wilderness of Lent and come to Easter Sunday. We want to jump ahead. We don't want to walk through it and feel it and experience it. All of the feelings and emotions and stories and remembrances and cheers and tears. We remember, however, that Jesus, as he set his sight on Jerusalem and the cross, knew what he was willing to do for you and for me, and willingly did that, going to the cross so that we would have eternal life, everlasting life, the forgiveness of our sins, the blessedness of being with Jesus, not only in the world to come, but Jesus being with us now. And so we say, thank you, Lord. And we also say thank you to healthcare workers. And we comfort those who have died, those family members who are in grief and mourning. And we reach out to those who have recovered, if it's COVID or if it's anything else. Because this is what we do as followers of Jesus Christ. We stay together. We care for one another. We show the love of Jesus because he is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy Week begins. We have to go through Monday, Thursday and Jesus' last meal with his disciples, which becomes our Holy Communion. We have to go through his arrest and his farce of a, a trial and his hanging on the cross and then waiting on Saturday while he is in the, the tomb. Easter's coming, but please journey with us during this Holy Week, this Lenten wilderness, and come out on the other side with Jesus. Amen.
let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. And I ask you these questions that remind us of our baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching service of the gospel. Deliver us from hardships as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation that we may take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those who suffer waiting expectancy for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed, defend those who are wrongly accused, and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember those who have died, who, have, <clears throat> who were commended into your hands, Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share our Lord's peace with one another. Beverly, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Pastor, the peace of the Lord be with you.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Beverly, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Esther, the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace, safety, good health, and abundant life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.